uh, the poll that you cited, you said that 50 people were 300, I believe. Terrence Group. Um, you've signed the National Repeal as pledged to block health uh, healthcare reform act, the overhaul package. Um, Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I, I, would, uh, I would characterize it differently. I, I would say that I'm facilitating real reform. Uh, since we're talking about that, this concept of doubling down, um, I think it's very important to understand the history, the development of our current situation before we prescribe a, a change. When I was with my patients, you talked about research. You know, that was always a big part uh, of every interaction I had with a patient. We would spend a long time trying to find out what was underlying the problem. It's easy to say, oh, I've got pain in the shoulder here. Does it hurt? Yeah. And sorry about that, I just whacked the mic. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, move on with whatever I happen to be wanting to do that day. The hard thing is to step back and say, how did you get here? What were you doing a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, a year ago uh, that contributed to this? What are you eating that plays a role in this? What's your workstation look like? All of those factors, which, you know, may not be apparent to the untrained eye, but which are, are important. And uh, I think the same thing is true with healthcare. When I when I look at the healthcare situation, uh, in my practice, what I was finding, as I mentioned, was that more and more, both my patients and I were trying to find ways to comply with a series of rules and not making decisions on what, in our best judgment, was the appropriate care, but but what in everybody else's judgment would justify uh, moving forward. And so I started to do a little research into how we got here. And as I understand it, it turns out that. Primarily, the, the connection between employment and health insurance developed as a market reaction to price and wage controls uh, in, the great, during, in, the after the, in the aftermath of the Great Depression, when there was an, an effort being made to rein in inflation. And, and so the government stepped in and said, you can only pay so much, you can only pay so little, you can only charge so much, you can only charge so little. And companies looking for ways to reward good employees looked for new ways to do that. And one of them was benefits. And health benefits were a relatively new concept, but one which very quickly became popular. Uh, and a lot of companies began to adopt it as, you know, sort of standard business model until we're at where uh, we're at today. The unintentional consequence of that was that there was a fundamental shift in the way we viewed healthcare. In the past, we viewed healthcare primarily as a person's responsibility in conjunction with their doctor. Now, what we had was a situation where the employer was largely responsible for the purchase of the healthcare. And the consumer's only, the employee's responsibility was to consume it. Well, this creates a significant market distortion because when I go to the grocery store and I buy something, I'm motivated both by quality and price. I want filet mignon. Can I afford it all the time? Probably not. So then I make priority decisions uh, that, that I get to live with and therefore I'm the one responsible for. Well, with healthcare, it's not all that much different. You still have to make decisions. When you hurt your arm, is an x-ray warranted or is an MRI? Uh, well, those, those decisions on the patient's side are driven primarily by wanting to know all of the information and getting the very best care. So he wants the MRI, no matter what. Uh, the, the employer's responsibility is to maintain some kind of decent coverage at a reasonable price. And so he's driven by different forces. And they're essentially in competition. And I talk to small business owners, and I certainly went through it myself. Uh, every year you have to go back to those employees and say, hey, you know, we've done everything we can to get you the best coverage, but the deductible is going to have to go up this year, or your copay is going to have to go up, or, or something like that. And we have a, a situation which shouldn't be, because really there's no reason why individuals couldn't purchase their own health insurance just like they do car or homeowner's insurance. And that would dramatically shift the market forces that underlie it. I, I personally have a health savings account, uh, which is this kind of program that I'm talking about. I pay under $400 a month for coverage for my, for my family. And it's a comprehensive plan with a large deductible. I take the balance of what I would be spending How in a... How large is the deductible? Uh, 5000 I take the balance of what I would be spending in a traditional policy, and I put that five grand into a savings account. Now, I control the first five grand. I, I spend it in whatever way I want. Once it's gone, then I move into the insurance market, and I, you know, have all the same things that er everyone else faces. You know, what's the coverage? You know, which doctor can I go to? What percentage? All of those things, you know, become a reality. But for most Americans, that first five thousand is enough to cover much of their needs, and then the comprehensive kicks in. So what happens now is I have different motivations when I go to the doctor, because I both want the best quality care. Let me just. Um, 
for most Americans, the 5,000 deductible takes care of it? Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, for, for a majority of Americans, uh, $5,000 is more than they spend on, on health care in a year. More than they spend through their deductible? No, more than, they more than they spend in total. Correct. But the risk to a, somebody who's making twenty-five thousand dollars a year and um, bringing home X percentage of that, if they had to spend five thousand dollars of that, they right. So, be in the same so let's. Boat they're in now. That's right. So let's talk when we get to the end about how that's dealt with. Because you're right. I mean, not everyone can afford to pay ten thousand dollars a year. I'm a small businessman who. Well, so far has been able to afford it, although, you know, with the economy being what it is, you know, everyone's facing a significant reevaluation of their, of their fiscal situation. But you're, but you're right. I mean, they're, th clearly that's not going to work. This model, standing alone, buying it as an individual is not going to work for everybody.